Hi, everybody. Welcome to Habitat Now. I'm your host, Aaron Shea, and it is my honor to take you all the way to the UK safely uh, today to visit artist David Rieke. And he's joined by his wife, Pam, who's kind of off center from the camera, but she can wave too. And there she is. Good to see you. <laughs> we're, we're, it's a lot of fun to visit you guys. We've met, met you multiple times and had you up for international. So it's going to be a lot of fun to dive into your world and see some of your work and share uh, what we all love. And I've been a big fan of your work for ages. And I'm looking forward to this today. So um, without further ado, I am going to uh, take over your screens and I'm going to start this presentation. We're going to give a little bit of a, a tour of his uh, home and studio digitally. And then from there, uh, David will take over and uh, show his presentation. So yeah, so here we right. go. Okay. okay. All right. So welcome, David Wiki. Thank you all for joining me. And again, this will be posted on YouTube. So if you are watching it on Facebook, watch us there. If you uh, are want to like, subscribe, hit that bell, we appreciate it. And get the word out and share this with people who you know might enjoy it. All right, let me get my mouse over here. Okay, so upcoming news, the 50th anniversary of Habitat is going to be live and in person in September. The details are on Habitat.com. Invitations to artists are we sending out. We're going to be sending out an invitation to all of our clients. It's going to be a little different this year where there's going to be a postcard sent out with some of the details and you can request a formal invitation, which will be very fun celebrating this exhibition. Um, it's going to be an amazing experience. Lots of artwork from artists around the world in the Habitat family. Events, um, something new. We're going to be having a VIP Habitat dinner Saturday night instead of doing our big opening. And that will give us an opportunity to mingle, explore the presentation and the exhibition, listen to Ferd and Ann, the founder of Habitat, give a talk about his life and career in glass. And I'm sure many artists will join in that ex uh, experience as well, telling their stories. It should be a lot of fun. We were thinking of doing a roast of David Hutchhausen again, because I guess I did that years ago, but we'll maybe do that in the future, which could be a lot of fun. Um, Glass49.com is online still for artwork that is available from the Habitat artists and our family. And it, I advise you to check it out. Um, the vault at Habitat, which is our back room, <laughs> is open and it will be going live for a formal opening in September. So if you have work that you want to res resell, feel free to contact us. And if you want to come see it, you're obviously welcome to. Um, these, these Habitat Zooms will continue. We have a bunch of uh, amazing talent lined up for the future. I think next week's going to be incredible. So make sure you keep coming back and tell your friends. Steve Lynn will be having an exhibition later this year in September at the Fort Museum of Art. Want to make sure to give a shout out to Steve. Thanks for joining me every week, man. You're best. <laughs> um, the Not Grandma's Glass presentation is online. We just had uh, Chad Fanfara give his presentation. And next week, next month is Petra Herbakova, who is Tomas Helvichka's daughter, who works in a similar madam, ma ma way, similar way as her, fa her, her father but different and more contemporary, which is a terrible way of putting it, but an amazing talent nonetheless. Oh, this is my first photo of cartoon uh, David Rieke. This is uh, I, I, a youthful picture. I, I took a double glance at it to make sure it was you. And there is your yeah, cartoon. Yeah. And, yeah. So, You're like our grandson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, send, I'll send you guys these photos. You can have some fun with them. And here's the next one. Look at All that. Right. <laughs> they even fixed your hair. Look at that. It's it's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. It's got color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These apps I are very young fun. again. <laughs> I thought these are really fun and friendly to do. And uh, I might keep dabbling in these because they're quite humorous. And I did my daughter and my whole family, so they're a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, there's the real guy. Welcome. Uh, all right. Yeah, I appreciate a you being nice woody here. jumper. Right. So I am going to uh, make sure my sound is on. So, but you're going to talk over this video, right? Yeah, I'm going to talk over the the the, 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 the studio tour. Okay. Right, let's, so let's get this rolling. I'll make sure I'm on mute here, so it doesn't. Yeah, there we go. So you're welcome to talk over it. Okay. Well, well, yeah. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Thanks for the introduction, and no welcome problem. everybody. It's great, great to speak to you all. This is my workshop uh, in uh, Dickleborough in Norfolk about 15 miles um, south of Norwich and uh, so I'm taking you inside basically um, and we'll just do a quick tour of the, of the different rooms. I, I, I put this um, I put this video together really for other glass artists so you know it's um, you know just showing you me showing people really the way my setup is. So this is the my main sort of area I do all my modeling sort of wax modelings um, I'm working on female figures at the moment for the first time. So that's, that's why all you got these photographs and there's a wax in process there. 
I'm gonna kick it going. There we go. Sorry. No. And so we just—it's just all the dura, dura, uh, uh, What's the word? Duratus, duratus, duratus of uh, an artist studio. Um, lots of CDs. Keep me happy. The tools and that, and then we go into um, these refrigerators, which some of you might be familiar with. But this is where I keep all my little people, keep them chilled, because <laughs> the, uh, the the I use soft mac modeling wax, and uh, so I need to keep it sort of cool when I'm not working on it. And uh, these are all uh, all the, the bits being gradually put together of these female figures. They're they're actually called Venus off balance. And uh, towards the end of my uh, talk, you'll see the, the finished product. This is uh, just a, a sort of a bit of a wet room where I do, poli you know, I don't do a lot of polishing, but this is basically where I kind of do all that kind of work, finishing off. Um, and then we swing around into basically the kiln room. And uh, I've got uh, top loading kilns. They're not enormous. They're, they're, about, uh, they're about two foot square uh interiors and they're sort of you know they're because i work on a fairly sort of um you know kind of medium scale size really and uh, that, that's a very old uh, top loader american one actually and um so these uh, these uh, you know this is where the work gets or the glass gets melted And then we go through to um, another room. I mean, I, I haven't, I've only had this for the last 10 years, but this basically is a, a room where I store work, do all my packing, so lots of foam rubber, lots of old cardboard boxes, newspapers. Uh, I also do my mold making here. So here there are some um, molds all boxed up with the uh, mold mitt material poured into them and uh, a big diamond saw, um, mold making sink for, um, and then bags of flint and plaster basically that's that's the the um, you know basically my molds are just a mixture 50 50 mixture of flint and plaster um, which are then so you'll see uh, 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 later on I'll show you inside a kiln how I support the work Every inch of the space is used, I can totally tell. <laughs> well, yeah, well, this is it. I mean, you know, well, so uh, 10 years, you soon build it all up. I mean, I, you know, I was in 25 years in the last workshop and mm -hmm. that was even worse. So this is a back room <laughs> where um, I could do all my uh, steaming out. So the, the, in the background there, you can see sort of wallpaper stripper thing, strippers and uh, a, a wax melter, a, 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 a Bay Marie, which I melt the wax in. And so it's all like, uh, you know, catering stuff almost. Um, and then, you know, I've got various bits of woodworking equipment. Um, so I, I, I do quite, I do, I suppose I do do quite a lot of work with wood, in, you know, with, within my work, mm -hmm. usually, usually bases and things I build up stuff. So lots of, lots of tools. Um, and then you, you come around and then I've got these, these big plastic sinks that I had especially made, which are great because you can, you know, you can put glass in there and, it, you know, if you drop something, it's going to bounce on the plastic and not sort of shatter. So, um, you know, they're very useful. Uh, uh, a flatbed, a flatbed grinder, sort of two foot uh, diameter um, flatbed grinder for finishing the work off. So it just grinds the, uh, the, the, the bases of the work flat. Uh, the rest, the rest of the polishing is really done more or less by hand with little uh, Dremel machines and and hand polishing diamond hand polishing pads. So not, I, I don't do a lot of um, a, a lot of sort of uh, uh, finishing work. So um, you know, I mean, like you know, Peter, Peter Bremers will know. I mean, you know, to get to get that high gloss on a piece of glass, you need pretty sophisticated machinery. But I try and dodge all that with uh, just kind of mm -hmm. rubbing the glass with a few diamond pads. And then we leave the workshop and go out into the garden. And uh, there's the house. It's uh, we're in we're in a we're in an old village. The house is about 1650, and uh, we've had additions. And you know, there's a little bit of a view of the garden. So that's that's about it. Very nice, great space. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay. Voila. There we go. And I'll have you 
Share the screen. Over. All right, I'm sharing screen. I'm sure your technical advisor's right there. Uh-huh. Right, you've and got that. And then this, that yeah. one up there. Yeah. Look, doing great. Great. Let's try it again. And there, there we go. go. Okay, yeah. now, then we want to go back to the title. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, right, so, you know, creating narratives in glass. So I'm, I'm going to really be showing you in a sense, the, the, the way in which I, um, I, uh, I, 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 I tell stories with my work and, uh, and obviously I work figuratively, which make, makes life a, a lot easier for me. Um, I've got a good quote here from, uh, from um, uh, the tropic, uh, Henry Miller's Tropic of Cap Capricorn, in, in 19, uh, in, uh, written in 1939. And he made this observation uh, that life becomes a spectacle. If you happen to be an artist, you record the passing show. And I think that's what I've been doing, you know, all my work in life, really looking, looking at the world around me and, and, and commenting on it, really. So um, I was born in 1947. So this is me at the uh, Queen's coronation in 1953. So I was six here. Um, um, I was, I was, Brought up in Hackney in East, the East End, so it's very, very similar to um, sort of Brooklyn in uh, in uh, in New York. You know that kind of you know side of the the rough side of the of, of the city, um, and um, and I suppose in a sense, you know, my my thinking in terms of the way I work now even started then. Um, the war, you know, the war was only um, you know kind of um, you know seven or eight years away, and. Um, um, and I still had, you know, there were still plenty of bomb sites, which were my playground, really, in, in London. And, um, and, and, and in a way, you know, people were struggling. And my father was a policeman and my, my mother, they, he moved from Scotland to London and my mother moved in from Wales to uh, London during the Depression. So in the mid 1930s and they met. And so, I, I you know, I, I was sort of introduced to sort of like the entrance, you know, to say, to say the least, the interesting side of life, you know. So this, in a sense, gave me this kind of feeling of um, of empathy for people, you know, that I could I could sort of I felt I could sort of relate to, you know, the way people felt about life. And uh, that's really what I tried to get over in my work. Um, this is a, 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 a piece called Different People from 2007. Uh, education. I, I, I went to Stourbridge College of Art in the West Midlands, near Birmingham in, in, in the UK, and one of my tutors, Harry Seeger, um, was quite an eminent um, a sculptor at the time, and he was one of the first people really to use glass in these big metal constructions to, um, to uh, cre create, you know, kind of pretty large sculptural works, and this was in the, uh, the you know, the, the, the early 1960s. And so, in a sense, it was quite it was quite a revelation to see somebody working with with with, with this you know with glass uh, at that time. And Stourbridge was the the, um, the main. Um, this is a piece that he's called, which is called um, um, Sugar Daddy from uh, uh, around about 1970, I suppose. And uh, I was, in a sense, Stourbridge College of Art was set in the in in, in the actual glass. Uh, Industry is a glass industrial glass industrial town, uh, and had lots of glass factories, which are still going. You know, when I was there from sixty seven to nineteen seventy, and um, you know the, the the tutors were obviously you know they were teaching glass, but but because it was the nineteen sixties, they were also doing quite sort of um, bizarre and interesting things. And the other tutor that had a big influence on me was Keith Cummins. And uh, you well may, may have seen his, um, you know, his his book on uh, kiln formed kiln forming te te techniques. This is the kind of work that I was doing when I was at uh, college. So this is a, a glass and neon construction I did uh, in 1969, uh, 70 for my degree show, and um, along with a lot of ceramics and uh, other 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 glass work but I, I was really into sort of um, forming glass in kilns making these uh, uh, these shapes out of uh, sheet glass and then constructing them into large kind of uh, constructions and 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 uh, I mean because it was the 60s neon was obviously kind of very fashionable and uh, so you know the idea of actually getting some uh, neon made up was was quite exciting and uh, you know, gave a, a new element to the work. 
so when I left college, I continued this kind of uh, this 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 kind of uh, way of working with sheet glass and and fabricated it and, and bended it and molded it in the kiln. So I, I wasn't really doing any casting at this point. Uh, this piece, which is just called Construction Number One, is actually in the Portsmouth Museum, and they actually uh, broke one of the the uh, the upright elements of, of the piece and I had to um, I had to repair that recently about two years ago so this is this is the this is the re re sort of constructed uh, construction number one um, I mean drawings are um, you know quite a, a big part of my my life and so um, during that that period when I left college in 1970 uh, before I could, I actually got back into to doing anything, which took took about sort of uh, best part of five years, really. Um, I just kept sketchbooks going with drawings like these, and uh, you know, by nineteen um, uh, seventy five, I was I was I was lucky to start uh, uh, teaching uh, at, at uh, North Staffs Polytechnic, which is in Stoke on Trent in uh, in England. And um, so I managed to get back into glass work. I, I also started a fellowship in glass making um, in, uh, in Lincoln. And um, so everything started to come together and, and it allowed me to get back into making my work. And these were the sort of things that I was making in from sort of 1975 to 1980. So the, these constructions, which are called, just called constructions with, with black squares uh, are actually from, from about 19, I think from about 1979, 80. And then I, um, I actually then got really sort of interested in, um, in the idea of, of casting. And uh, these, this is a, a piece which is in the, uh, the, the Dudley glass collection. So Dudley's uh, another town in the West Midlands, which is quite an important place for glass. And they have, they have a major collection of, um, of, uh, of British industrial glass and a lot of contemporary glass um, sort of which they've collected over the, over the years. And they're, they're in the point of, um, of opening a new museum uh, in Stourbridge at the old Stuart uh, Glass Factory. Uh, and it's, I think it's called the White, the White House, the White House Cone, is it? I think mm. White House Cone Factory uh, Museum. And I think that's going to open to the public next year. And so that, you know, if you come to, if you come to, to the UK, it's well worth, it'll be well worth looking this museum up. So this is called construction with garden fig guardian figures. Um, I, I didn't really know too much about casting until I sort of read a book um, um, about about uh, Frederick Carder's work. So this is a, a lost wax cast bull that he did in um, I think 1943, um, and uh, of course Frederick Carder uh, came from uh, Britain, in fact from Stourbridge, and set up um, the uh, the glass works at Stew Ben, and which obviously you know now corn in and um so and he was a very you know obviously a very talented um uh, uh glass maker who sort of was interested in turning his hand to all kinds of techniques and he really explored you know the, the idea of lost wax casting because it had really kind of almost gone out of fashion because i mean although the romans used it you know it wasn't really and i suppose the nearest thing was the french pat de Beer artist but Frederick Carter really kind of got into the whole idea of, of, of modeling and casting quite large things. I mean, he did a, he did a, a large horse's head and a large Indian head, which was, was massive for the time. I mean, these were, you know, we're talking about, you know, half a ton of glass almost. And so th this spurred me on to sort of, you know, cast more sort of interesting pieces and give some sort of scale to the work. This was, this was a piece called, um, uh, construction with pedestrian from 1980 so I was still using the glass constructions but um, but but I actually introduced these little cast figures to um, to, to give the, 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 the pieces scale because they were like frustrated bits of architecture really and um, and yeah, but of course when I did this I realized that I was actually beginning to tell you know a story that there, there, there was a narrative suddenly a narrative was creeping into the work and of course, the the, the, the casting got the, the lost wax casting got more um, extravagant as I got into the whole idea of modelling. So th you know, this is a piece um, which is in in several several parts. Uh, again, another sort of a construction, and again, it's called construction with guardian figures from 1981. And this piece is the uh, is part of a series called Observers. 
which is Observer Number no. Five from uh, 1992. And so, like in a sense, you know, by this time, that the whole idea of the figure has become much more, uh, you know, kind of animated, I suppose, and and, and much more sort of, um, in in a sense, kind of, um, um, you know, tr sort of true to life, I suppose. I, I, I try. I, I've, I've never, I've never really tried to sort of make perfect figures. They've always been slightly exaggerated, one way or the other. To, to give them a feeling of uh, of, of action or or, or 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 some sort of feeling of, of of what they are actually you know trying to tell as a story. So this is Observer uh, number five from 1992. Um, in 19 um, um, oh, sorry. In 1988, I did a Winston Churchill fellowship to America, and. Um, so this is the guy, and as Steve Weinberg uh, mentioned when I, I, I came to see him uh, in his studio, uh, he said, who, who do you mean? The, you mean the fat guy with a big cigar? <laughs> and, uh, so that was, that, was, uh, that was his impression of, of, of Winston Churchill. And, uh, but it was a great fellowship because it gave me, um, it gave me eight weeks in the States visiting um, a glass artist, mainly working with architectural glass. So I, I, I met up with Paul Marioni, Jamie Carpenter, Howard Ben Trey and, uh, as I said, Steve Weinberg. Also, I had already, I already sort of got to know um, Bob and Ellie Miller, who were obviously a, a big, big influence in my work in, in, in a sense that they started to show my work in the States. They, um, as, a, as, as gallery owners, they, they, they took faith in British glass and actually opened a, 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 new, a, a gallery in Montclair in New Jersey and uh, specialise in, in, uh, in, in glass from the UK. And then a of course, they moved to, the, to New York with the Miller Gallery, you know, um, uh, on Broadway. And, uh, you know, sadly, Ellie died recently. And, but Bob, Bob, they were lovely people. And Bob's a lovely man. And we're still in, in contact with him. But they, you know, they, 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 they inspired and promoted a lot of British artists. This is the kind of work that they were, were um, um, showing at the time. So this is a piece called um, uh, conf confront, confront, The Confrontion. The, the confrontation, uh, cut the confrontation. Sorry, confrontation from 1989, and uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a very. Uh, I'm not. Although I come from the UK, I'm not very kind of good on its language. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's all part of being from the East End, as Alan will well know. <laughs> um, now, my first introduction to Habitat was this piece which I think might have been one of the first pieces that, that, that Habitat showed via the Miller Gallery. I think they, they lent this to Habitat for, for one of the uh, earlier um, uh, Glass Internationals. Uh, so this is, this is from um, uh, 1994 and I think that was probably around about the year that, 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 that it, went, it went to Habitat. And um, so, you know, that, that's sort of quite, quite an interesting piece to me. To me. And uh, really with this piece, it was at, at the time that um, we, had a, we had Margaret Thatcher in government and, and a lot of industry was being shut down and a lot of people were losing uh, uh, jobs. And so in a sense, what I'm trying to say with this piece, which is quite a political piece, I suppose, is the fact that you've got people who are quite skilled. I mean, these are engineers, so they could be actual engineers. They could be, uh, they could be sort of, uh, you know, kind of miners. They could be, I mean, there's, they, you know, they're, 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 they're kind of ambiguous about what sort of work they're doing, but they're pulling these little buckets. So it's almost as if all their skills that they've, they've acquired over the years have suddenly just been decimated because their industry has, has, has disappeared and of course we had all the minor strikes and things like that going on in this country so this was called the engineers um inept juggler on the on the left and juggling with too too many balls these were these were sort of pieces that um are sort of made in the 19 um, 1990s and uh, this is the sort of work that bob and ellie miller would, would have been showing at the time and uh, really, I suppose it's all about uh, being um, about uh, they're almost like pieces of trompe l'oeil in a way, because they're although they're, they're kind of semi uh, three dimensional, they're actually flat backed. So by, by, by being flat back, that meant that the mould was very open. These are quite large pieces, so quite big moulds, but it meant I could get in through the back of the figure into the inside of the mould and paint 
um, enamel color onto the surface of the mold. So when the glass melted into the mold, it adhered to the surface of the uh, of the glass figure. So um, so this is um, um, at the time, and if you you know you can see that the the limbs of these figures are exaggerated, and the you know the whole idea of this movement. And a painter at the time, uh, Peter Housen, uh, a Glaswegian artist um, from the sort of 1980s, um, he, um, he, you know, his, his paintings, these are very, again, exaggerating the actual movement of figures, you know, really kind of, uh, sort of caught my eye. And I, 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 I sort of followed his work over the years. This is um, the dancer from 1996. Uh, again, this is, uh, although it looks three dimensional, the back of the figure is flat, the hands are three-dimensional, the head is three-dimensional, but the body is, although it's thick, it's actually got a, a, a flat sort of back to it. Now this is me at Pilchuck, so you know I've, I've, um, I've put in a, a, a few images of, of, of my uh, time in America, uh, wrestling with some sort of big mole that was being, this was a large um, sort of suited figure that, that was being actually blown in the glass in the glass uh, the, you know the, the the main glass workshop and um, the hot house and uh, the, the mold obviously kind of broke at some point as is me struggling to get it all back together again from to, to make another piece but uh, I think my uh, I think my daughter has got one of these pieces stuck in her garden <laughs> <laughs> in Norwich um, also, I was at Pilchuck in 1990, 91 and uh, 93. Those are the three years I taught there. And the, I can't remember, but I think probably around about 1991, I, I worked with Pino Signoretti in the hot shop. And he he made, along with, I think it was Paul uh, De Soma, Paul De Soma, uh, they made these big um, uh, comic heads for me, these clowns heads. Um, and they're... they're big blown pieces with these huge kind of uh, uh, lumps of glass fixed on for the noses and ears etc. They were very fun to make and then when I got home I made these ceramic um, ceramic bases for them and um, and so there um, I think actually one of one of these is in the Dudley uh, Museum collection. So this is uh, I don't know if anybody recognizes in anybody in these uh, pictures, but the, uh, the the girl with the black tights and the, and the white sort of hat, that's Philippa Edwards, who was my uh, TA at Pilchuck, um, but I honestly can't remember who everybody else is. The, 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 the woman on the with the blue looks very much like Leah Wingfield, but I don't know if that is you. <laughs> <it, yeah. laughs> and I, I don't know, I don't know who the, who the Cuban is. <laughs> Funny. And uh, there's a, another group. So I, mean, I, I always remember the old face. Wait a minute, what goes on in this place? This looks different than I imagined. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so if, any, if you recognize anybody, shout out. He used to come home exhausted, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I believe it. <laughs> too much too much drinking. Somebody commented it might have been Tina Olden now. What, uh, Harold Meyer might have said that in the, in the picture. All right. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. David, <laughs> you remember that what happens in Pilchuck stays in Pilchuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We right. know you were uh, having uh, 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 That's it, yeah. <laughs> Diving naked into the pond, you know, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to go there. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so just some images of uh, this is you know kind of work from that that sort of nineteen um, nineties uh, period. I think this was a piece uh, called Fortress Mentality. So this is this is me working with clay and wax. So um, basically, you know, it's quite a nice combination because I can make the clay body very rapidly um, in, rel rel in relativity to the wax. Um, but then I can get a lot more detail with the wax. And then when I cast this up, um, I can just, I can obviously, I can remove the clay as long as, as, long as it's, it's not too detailed and there's no ridiculous undercuts. You can remove the clay very easily. And then obviously the wax will then be steamed out. So the wax piece can have as much detail and as much undercuts on it as, as you like, because the wax is going to actually be melted out of the mould. Hmm. And of course, then when you uh, then, you know, melt the glass into the mould, then obviously that uh, that just takes uh, takes up all the all the shaping. Um, and again, 
because the this 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 is a, isn't particularly a flat back piece. So th this I would have gone into the body, and I can paint again, paint paint these uh, ceramic enamels on the inside of the mold to give the piece um, um, uh, the the finish I want. For some reason, I haven't put the slide of the finished piece in, but uh, you get the. I mean, this is a similar similar work. These are these are piece piece called pieces called um, a slight problem um, from two thousand and two. And I work with uh, Neil Wilkin, who, um, 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 you know, I think a few, might, a few people might have heard about. But he's a brilliant glass blower. And, um, and uh, well, Peter's definitely worked with him. And um, he blew these uh, large kind of glass uh, spheres for me. And, uh, and of course, you know, it's, it's a bit of British understatement. It's a slight problem, but of course, it's not quite a slight problem. It's a bit more of a bit more than that. But, um, you know, again, it's all this kind of thing about life, you know, that, 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 uh, that people people have quite big problems, but tend to understate them. And it's uh, that's the sort of feeling I was trying to get with this with this work, you know. Some of my work ends up in museums. So this is in America as well. This is the. Uh, Racine Art Museum in Wisconsin, and I think they're famous for cheese. And um, this is the piece, the piece that they obviously uh, bought off of one of the galleries at some point, or somebody maybe donated it to the to the to the museum. And uh, apparently, I, I was sent this because children like to pose in front of it with a lump of cheese on their head. So uh, that's Wis that's Wisconsin for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another artist um, that um, I, I kind of, I, 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 you know, I mean, there's many, many artists I, I look at, but th this guy, I, when I left college in 1970, he, uh, John Davies is his name, a British, British sculptor who works in, uh, in fiberglass, painted fiberglass and actual objects. So, you know, proper clothing and obviously these are real buckets and things. And he made these very surreal um, figures. So they're, they're almost a theatre of the absurd. And um, this exhibition at the Whitechapel, which was in 1970, um, was one of the first sort of major exhibitions that, um, you know, I, I kind of um, came to, you know, came to visit after leaving college when I was thinking, you know, what am I going to do now sort of thing, you know. And, uh, you know, so th th seeing work like this kind of inspired you to sort of, you know, to carry on and, and, and then sort of work towards. So in, um, in then in, in sort of... Um, um 2000 and i mean 90, around about 1998 um i started this series called um living in confined spaces and the idea was really i mean it was basically that, that you know this feeling that the people um were sort of making almost making prisons for themselves uh, that, you know we, we you know we watch too much television we we kind of um we, we're um I mean, the pandemic, you know, I mean, the pandemic really sums it all up because we've, we've been literally locked into our houses. But, but you had the feeling that society was kind of creeping in that direction anyhow. And, um, and it's very easy that, you know, that, that, that people were losing touch with the outside world. So in this series of work, I, I, I came up with the idea of having two or three figures in a small space with just a piece of furniture and they kind of basically... Um, uh, you know, did different things with that piece of furniture. And these are quite large pieces because they, the, you know, the, the, the big wooden base would, would, would raise it up. The figures are about sort of, I suppose, 15, 15 to 14 inches high, something like that. And so this piece is, you know, you know, in, in total, it's, it's quite a high piece. So it's probably getting onto about, about three or four foot high, something like that. <clears throat> so this is living in confined spaces um, uh, number five. Uh, this is uh, living in confined spaces number seven uh, from uh, from 19, uh, 19, eight, 1998. Queuing for the chair, <laughs> making the most of the chair when you get there. It's like a, a ponderous sort of situation in their little space. So this this was uh, living in confined spaces number six. And then that led on to um, pieces like this, which is called uh, Afraid of Heights. And uh, I quite enjoyed making this because, you know, the actual glass element was relatively small. It's just these two glass figures. And I just I just used up a lot of scrap wood. So basically plywood, uh, chipboard, 
uh, any kind of any any kind of wood that that, that was sort of uh, lying around and cut it into circles. Excuse me. Built up this kind of large tower, sort of like a. It's actually in two parts. So the the the, the actual wooden part comes up. You know, there's two separate parts. And it's about, I suppose it's about sort of um, six foot six high altogether. It's about the height of a, just slightly higher than, the, the, you know, a normal person. So that's Afraid of Heights from uh, 1999. The last piece in this, in that particular series was this, uh, a slight disagreement. So obviously the, 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 the figures have got fed up living in their little confined space. And there was a bit of a, a, a an argument going on and that was the end of that particular series when that series are each of those pieces like unique or are they all cast individually or do you use the same form a couple of times yeah yeah well the the the, the, the figures um that I, I i would do it i do a master mold of a very simple you know if you imagine a figure a bit like like the oscar you know in mm -hmm. the oscars it's just a very very sort of basic standing figure so that I would have that uh, I would have that as a as a master mold, just a simple plaster mold, which I would pour wax into, and then that would mm. come, those waxes would come out, and then I would manipulate them. So I I would cut them up and then add arms and 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 you know and manipulate the legs. So so in a sense, you know, each 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 figure, you know, is made from this one basically this one mold. So so that these come from the same mold as, as they come so so they they are they are in you know when they're finished when they're finished as right. waxes they are totally unique that's pretty in, ingenious you're you're creating a, your own action figure over and over and over again I tell yeah you. yeah that's well pretty, that's it yeah it's pretty mean, wild that's, that's what i say especially when they're they're all sitting in their fridges and you open them up you know it's almost as if they've been moving around and then suddenly they freeze you know <laughs> I got, a, I got a yeah. I got a question from uh, Judy Heller. How large is slight disagreement? Um, so that that, that yeah. base that base is probably about eighteen inches. Uh, yeah, around about eighteen inches high. The figures are about fifteen. So we're talking about getting on for about three foot high, something like that. Gotcha. Meter, yeah, about a meter, one meter. No. Although I think I think in the states you're still going inches, don't you? For for now. <laughs> And the, the, you know the, the bases are um, painted wood basically. And this is um, a, a, a sort of a piece piece that developed. So here, I mean, this this, this answers that question uh, about you know the figures. So here, I've I've, I've used the mold, and I've I've I've, I've actually kind of did a, um, you know uh, made multiple waxes. I mean, they're all slightly different because each each one is the, the pieces um uh you know especially the genitalia is all added on afterwards and and then each each face is slightly different and obviously this one figure who's turning his head you know is again is sort of like the wax has then been sort of like you know heavily manipulated but this is this this piece was really spot you know in a, in a, in a sense um uh, inspired by the fact that these figures were coming out of a you know a repetitive mold but um and so in a sense and uh, um, I, you know this piece which is called a captive audience uh, is very much about the kind of whole idea of cloning but as humans you know although you know there might be elements in society that are trying to make us all the same there's always that element of human curiosity that kind of makes you break away from that mold you know and that was so this this piece is actually in the bna so it was it was commissioned commissioned by the bna for the year 2000. I don't. I, it, it, it's on. It's on display sometimes. I, the last time I went to the VNA, which was obviously two years ago, before the, they had it, actually had taken it off display. Mm. Another big influence in my life is um, is is uh, is Dan Klein and Alan Paul. You know, and um, sadly, Dan is no longer with us. And but uh, Alan very much is, and he's a great friend. But Dan, of course, was a great sponsor of British Glass. He he kind of well, obviously he's written books and he he, he created many exhibitions. And the, this is us at uh, one of the Chicago um, uh, uh, you know sofa shows at Chicago, having a few drinks in the in the hotel. But um, you know I, I you know I owe a lot to uh, to Dan Klein. 
uh, an exhibition that he had um, that um, Dan and Alan had at their home, um, um, which was called Exchange, uh, Exchange of Information. And I had over, over, over a couple of years, I, had, I collected together these, um, these, these birds, these ceramic, they're just simple ceramic birds from, from uh, what we call charity shops. I think you call them thrift shops. And, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of these birds and I, I was kind of thinking, oh, I've got to do something with them, you know, and because uh, I just loved the crude way in which they were painted and that kind of. And then suddenly, I thought, you know, there, there, there was this kind of empathy between the figure and the bird. And so I, I, I did a whole series of, of, of pieces like this. And, uh, and, and Dan and Ali, Alan actually, um, you know, put on, on an exhibition of this work at their, um, at their, at their gallery in, in their home in Pimlico, London. Um, I use a lot of um, images from newspapers and also looking at other artists. This, this, this figure here is uh, by Henri Dumier, Dumier and, um, from about 1857-ish. Um, and um, he's a great illustrator, a great caricaturist. Also, I look at uh, newspaper photographs and uh, because in a sense, you could go out with a camera looking for people and interesting things, but you know, you're not gonna see you know, that much, but you go through a newspaper and of course, you know, cameramen are shooting people all the time and getting incredible poses and expressions and things like this. So newspaper photographs are very, very, very useful. Um, so here I've used a newspaper photograph from a football match, which is then, you know, culminated in this drawing and then actually gone into this piece of work called uh, Sympathetic Thoughts um, from 2009. And uh, so you can see the way in which, you know, the, 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 the photographs, the drawings all sort of come together in the work. You know, once I have a drawing finished, then you know, almost I'm sort of confident I can almost see the, the finished piece of work. So these are again big lost wax heads, and the the the, the body part, the sort of cylind cylindrical form, um, which is solid glass, it would have been made, again made in clay, and then the wax head implanted into the clay, and then the whole thing cast up, clay removed, heads melted out, and then colour painted onto the insert side surface of the mould where I wanted it. And then the, the, the rest of the colour is just the, the way in which I, I, I mix colour with the actual um, uh, sintered glass, the, uh, the glass frit that goes into the mould. And then little things like, the, like, like, like little, you know, little beads of glass for, for eyes and things are added on later. This is um, negative thoughts. So in the same sort of series, and uh, dumb as a dodo, or as opposed to dead as a dodo. So this was all done during the Iraq war. Um, Tom Riley, um, the Riley galleries, uh, you know, Bob and Ellie decided to give up their galleries uh, around about the sort of, um, after just, uh, well, just after 9-11. I think they, they, they had hopes of opening another gallery in the Chelsea area of New York. But I mean, things were so sort of up in the air that they decided that, that you know, it was, uh, you know, it was just too much hard work to sort of get something sorted out. So, so they, they actually had a conversation with Tom Riley and, and, and Tom kindly took on my work and started showing it in uh, Cleveland in his, the gallery there. So he, this is us with um, uh, uh, Sherry Desenzo, uh, Tom, Cindy, his wife, and uh, Big Bob Desenzo who again, I think sadly died recently, well, a few years ago, but, um, you know, again, lovely couples and uh, that was a really nice time. This is us at Niagara, so in the background, that's the waterfall in the background there. So this is the sort of work that, um, that, that, that um, you know, kind of basically was sort of transferred from Tom Riley to, uh, to Habitat and, um, I'm very, you know, happy that, that Habitat also were very pleased, you know, were, were great, well, kindly, kindly took on my work. So, um, you know, because obviously when the, when, the, when, because Tom Riley decided to go into retirement, close his gallery and, you know, these things happen and then you kind of think, well, where am I going to go next? What am I doing? And, you know, Habitat were really, really kind to take on my work. So these are sort of, uh, sort of old, older pieces that they have. This is a, a, a mar marionette, um, and uh, just a pawn. 
these are all from sort of around, around, around about 2006 ish, something like 2007. And these are, um, you know, I'm using I'm using actually kind of found objects here. So this is a, um, a an old billiard table leg, um, which has uh, been you know reconstituted. And then I had these these large metal plates made up with, with a rod that stabilizes the whole thing. And then I sort of drilled and worked into this into this 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 piece of polished wood, and then sort of modelled. Uh, uh, lost wax pieces to, to fit into the woodwork and um, so uh, you know there, there's, there's several pieces I think I think uh, you know Habitat still has um, at least one of these or two of these pieces I think in their collection as well as the uh, the, the uh, marionettes and then as as with the uh, the casual bystanders as well this was a so I think this piece which is is, is, st is still with Habitat and um is one of the last pieces. I think there's one. There's one. There's one piece still in London, but from from, the, from that series, the, the, this is the, those are the only two left. The other series that I, I made um, when you know when when I, when I joined uh, Habitat was these um, this, this series of four figures called Strangers, and um, uh, I, you know I, I won't go into the whole story, but basically in Norwich. There is um, there is a place called the Strangers Hall. There's a Strangers Museum, and the Strangers refers to the Huguenots that came to Norwich in the um, 16th century, so 1500s, and um, well, basically they were strangers. They they brought weaving and they brought kind of um, um, uh, uh, leather making and and, and jewellery making, all these skills to to the city of Norwich. And uh, because they were, if they, they were, they were newcomers. They were, you know, accepted with a lot of suspicion. And um, and basically, you know, yes, it's sense these are also sort of, I suppose, early early ideas of Black Lives Matter as well. You know, where where people, are, you know, we we still we still we still find it hard to get rid of our uh, prejudices and suspicions of other people. So these uh, these figures come from that sort of uh, feeling, really. And uh, so they're, yeah, they're they're sort of like beck beckoning beckoning you to accept them. Um, so Pam and I um, visited um, um, Habitat for the International. Well, I suppose it's about three years ago now, isn't it? Something like that, three years ago. And uh, so that was a great experience because we we hadn't seen the gallery, and uh, it was amazing to, to 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 actually see what what what. what Habitat was actually like as a gallery, and of course, you know, it was a lovely meeting Corey and, and, and Aaron and everybody else. Being treated so well, Being, yeah, <laughs> fantastic, yeah, including this visit to this collector's home, which was, uh, I think, I think you, Peter, were having some uh, a, a sculpture erected in the garden, and uh, you know, this kind of chateau in the middle of. Detroit or wherever it was, <laughs> pretty bizarre, but it's lovely, you know, lovely experience. You know. I mean, this is America for you, isn't it, really? <laughs> Two people live there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, unfortunately, I can't remember. Do, do you know? Do, do you know the name of the? the I've, I've got. I've got my arms around this. Uh, you know, kind of young lady. Well, I was not so young. But she's. She, I think she was a collector, but I can't remember her name. Yeah, big big collector at the gallery. Big fan of hers. I'll uh, tell you. I'll tell you. I'll I'll send you a message. All right. Okay. So we, we just move on. Uh, you know, we're coming to. to I'll, I'll speed up actually a bit because we probably get a bit uh, near. To, to, to the end. So this is drawings for Temptation of Lies. And of course, we've all we're still going through this period of, uh, of, of 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 lies and manipulation of the truth because we have a, a Prime Minister Boris Johnson who kind of he's not quite as bad as Trump, but he comes out of a similar mould. And um, he, um, you know, basically we, we've gone through a period of of, of, of politics where um, you know the, the the truth has been bent so so much, you know to. To other people's um, other people's kind of ways, it's unbelievable, really. So we've got the uh, the politics of division, and that's what inspired these drawings and uh, uh, the whole idea of, of of the you know this devil character trying to persuade somebody of something and being rejected or sometimes being accepted. So of course here's our uh, nemesis, 
um, uh, Boris Johnson and uh, Dominic Cummings. <laughs> Sorry, I'll go back to that one. <laughs> Anyhow, he's still up. He's, uh, he's still up to his. Of course, we've got the we've got the G seven thing going on down in Cornwall at the moment, and of course he's. Um, Wheeling out the queen. He's wheeling, he's wheeled out the queen. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> poor, poor woman. <laughs> Anyhow, so th th this is inspired. The whole idea of temptation of lies, as I say, is this is the kind of idea of, of people playing with the truth, trying to persuade people. And s sometimes people are, you know, the, the, the other character is accepting it or, you know, or not. And um, I love the way you did teeth in that piece. Yeah, well, this is it. I mean, you know, again, you know, again, you know, a basic, a basic rough, very rough shape of, of a head form. And then, you know, you just work on it so you can, you know, you get all these different heads coming out of one sort of lump of wax, which is kind of just basically a, a sort of a, a rough sort of head form, you know. Right. But, it's it's um, so interesting to see because you see so many sculptures don't do, they don't do eyes, they don't do teeth. And you're just running full force into it because you're like, this is yeah, what it's all yeah, about. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and of course, exaggeration. I mean, like you know, these enormous hands, you know, mm. which are sort of exaggerating the, you know, kind of, you know, the, sort of they sort of just, oh, you know, don't worry, don't worry, it's all be going to be all going to be all right, mm. you know, kind of thing. And um, yeah, so, and also, <clears throat> I, I, this is a different different glass that I'm using here because this is a bullseye glass, and. Um, I found, um, and this is, I'll be talking very briefly about my, my daughter Morrigan in, in, in a second, but uh, she, she's been using bullseye glass a lot in her work. And what I discovered is actually the enamel colors that I use work incredibly well. They, they, because lead glass, which is most of the other work, the, the other work is, ma is made out of, it's about a 33% lead glass. The, the lead actually darkens the colors. So you never get a true red, and you certainly, you know, like that, that, that vibrant sort of um, limey green would probably be, you know, kind of difficult to get with lead glass. But, with, you know, but so in a sense, it was quite nice um, working with a different glass and getting this kind of almost vibrancy into the into the pieces. Because, you know, I think somebody quoted that my my work looks very dusty, which is, <laughs> I think, you know, was meant as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> So again, you know, waxes and clay being produced. This is things, this is being set up for casting. So these are very, very simple risers that I put in to allow the, um, you know, the glass to move within the mold. And then here's a piece that's cast up the clay, the clay body has been removed. So that's exposing the, the wax head and the, and the hand or the, or the base of those pieces. So they'll, that'll now go onto a steamer and then that, that wax will be steamed out of the mould. And this is it in the kiln uh, with the reservoir. And Tim, Tim was asking about the re reservoirs earlier on. And um, so you can see I make these kind of um, boxes on top of the, on top of the mould, which contain some of the glass. It depends on the mould. Some of the, some, sometimes the glass goes, it actually goes into the, it's into the body of the mould as well. But if it's something very delicate, I'll, I'll actually, I'll have a, some sort of a, 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 a little glass stopper will stop the glass actually going into the mold until it actually starts melting. But um, with these large, these large pieces, the, 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 some, most of the, uh, a lot of the, the glass frit is actually, so this is the colored frit uh, in, in the reservoir above the mold. And you can see a way in which I, I actually put buttresses all the way around the, uh, the mold to hold it all firmly together so you know so that any cracking doesn't open up and I find that way I get fairly nice clean you know clean pieces because because they you know they're, they're, they're quite, a, quite a few quite a few pounds of glass you know generally speaking these are usually sort of around about uh, between 20 and 25 pounds of glass in some of these pieces so that's the finish that's the finished piece that came out of those molds devil's arguing which was the final piece in that series of temptation of lies um slightly more recent work this is the um the uh, the builder i did I've, i did it recently did a series on, on on basically people at work uh in a very loose manner this was the the builder from uh, 2019 uh, the maker and the explorer again from 2019 
and I love using found objects. I mean, the 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 the, the, the globe is um, is basically again from a, a thrift shop. I think I think they were just you know they, they were actually glass globes. I mean, they're kind of slightly tacky things, but actually kind of work quite well. And um, and then then obviously you know with with the maker. I, I got I got hold of some. I mean, the only found object there actually is that nail, which is a, a, a actually a, a hand forged nail, um, and so um, you know they kind of just kind of added to the piece, and everything else was just sort of made up and painted out of wood. Um, coming up to recent work now, this is uh, the Red Planet. So this is Mars, if you recognise it. We all know where Mars is, and that a lot of people have got their eyes on Mars. And there's been quite a lot of explorational trips out there uh, by various countries, and some of them for good reasons, and some of them for less, perhaps, re good reasons. So obviously, you know, maybe, you know, Mars, even the moon might be sort of slightly, you know, kind of up for exploitation. So this piece, just called The Red Planet, um, is quite a, re a recent piece from that series, really, of, of, of the makers of, of people at work. But this is somebody maybe nurturing more i think probably more nurturing the the, the, the red planet than uh, than actually uh, envying it and, and and kind of drooling over it as, as a potential source of minerals maybe so the female figures which is the, the work I'm, I'm working on at the moment um again these, these these are the waxes in the fridge um gradually being built up um pam reckons that the uh, tits are in the wrong place but there we are <laughs> They all stem from uh, these uh, balancing figures, which were kind of almost and androgynous. They, they had no naughty bits on them, but they were just these balancing figures. And, uh, and because uh, I suppose, you know, because of the Me Too uh, um, uh, 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 thing, and especially in this country recently, you know, we've, we've, had, we've had a lot of problem with the way in which women are being treated and the latest thing is, is is young girls at school by 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 boys at school, you know. That, that, and uh, so, in a sense, that the, the, you know the female icon is is under attack in a way still. And uh, you know, and so in a sense, these these kind of slightly kind of iconic, uh, almost um, you know, kind of um, uh, I suppose that they like they're almost like uh, uh, totems. Uh, they're, they're sort of fertile little sort of you know kind of women all slightly off balance you know because they're because they're so their, their situation in society is so unstable so this is why you know this is where i got the title venus off balance this is my daughter morag and uh, we uh, collaborate where we collaborated i mean she basically comes to my workshop and to help out but also she does her own work and recently we collaborated on a series of work which is um, at the um, etienne gallery in in, in oystervik in, in holland and uh, this is so this is a series that we we worked on together and um, basically of protesters and uh, I, I worked on the heads and basically she worked on the bodies and, and this technique of, of putting shards so it's all made out of bullseye glass so what what Morag's done here is she's actually used bullseye sheet glass colored sheet glass and and when the um, you know the actual uh, uh, figures are uh, uh, wax she embeds the, uh, the, 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 the the glass pieces into the wax the head gets the, the head is also cast first that gets in, embedded in the wax cast up the wax is removed obviously the little shards of colored glass are left in the mold so when you melt that black or darkened glass or the orange or the green you know the ones at the back that flows and attaches itself and melts you know against the hairs and against the, the these shards of glass so they all get fused together and then, of course, when they come out of the mould, very carefully, we remove the mould material and uh, you get these incredibly spiky, slightly dangerous characters. And of course, that sort of, in a sense, was part of trying to emphasise the fact that they were protesters. This is, um, this is just a few pieces of, of, of Morag's work. She, 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 she's got three children. She's a young mum. Uh, she's also got a, 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 a child that's on the autistic spectrum and, and she... Um, you know he's a he's a he's a he's a bit of a problem in her life but um so a lot of this work comes from 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 that sort of um background um 
the first that that first piece there was called uh, Mrs. Winslow's Soothing Soothing Syrup, which is actually on one of the bottles, and then um, basically it's just pink pink mouse with uh, grey balloon and grey mouse with red balloon, and then the other one is babysitting with a little bronze duck. So this is my lovely wife Pam, me and uh, Pam in Hawaii two years ago, just just before lockdown. So we were lucky to get that holiday. We've got two great friends out in Hawaii. Uh, they live in, they live in between California and Hawaii, um, Nancy and Joe Walker, and uh, they're great friends. So that was a lovely, lovely break. And then back to where we live, there's the house. Um, that's it in the snow. So we do get winters, but uh, you know, pretty little scene. And back to the garden. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much for, for doing that today. I'm going to stop you from sharing, bring uh -huh. everybody back in front of each other. And I appreciate you joining us today. We're honored to have you. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. It's nice to get a glimpse into how David is so relevant to what's going on and creates works, what he's thinking about at that particular time. And it's it's, you know, if you want to catch up on current events, wait a little bit, he'll make something. <laughs> so, um, but feel free to unmute yourself and say goodbye or uh, feel free to, you know, I guess you can't really Just raise your hand. Just a quick correction on Wisconsin. Sure, Mostly Mary. Mostly the people in Green Bay wear the cheese hat. That's <laughs> for the All Green right. Bay Packers. Uh, right. Otherwise, where we walk around pretty um, hat free. Oh, correct. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be corrected. Thank you very much. No <laughs> well, uh, thank you all for joining us today. This was yeah, an honor. Great. Thank you. And, uh, David is great. Thank you, Pam, too, for helping out. I know you did. Um, Thanks, look, David. Great to see you, Cheers, David. Tim. Great. Nice to see you. Great. Awesome. Thank you very oh, much. That was you, David. Great talk. Lots Thanks, of Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Bye, Darren. Bye, David. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you again, Aaron. Always uh, great. Great to hear. Great. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Aaron. Great thank to you see you both, Pam. Nice to see you. Yeah, see, you yeah. see you soon, Leah. Hopefully down in Beal. I hope so. I can't wait. I miss you guys. <laughs> You're great. Uh, <laughs> hi, hi, Lucy. Lucy, I love, Hi, how are you? I love your dogs, Lucy.